Today's lesson is the second lesson in animating. I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, boys and girls, I'd like you to just pay very good attention to the animation we're going to be doing in today's class. Let's just build on what we did in the previous lesson. I'm going to be showing you how to duplicate frames. We'll be using the onion skin once again to provide some sort of transparency so we can th see through our frames. That's very necessary when one does animation. We're going to be using the eraser to focus on certain areas that need to be eliminated. I'm going to eliminate part of a character's eyes to give some sense of movement. So I'm going to animate those eyes. The onion skin is going to provide me with the ability to see through the frames and help me do this. I just wanted to apologize for the poor coloring on my display. That still needs to be set, though I'm showing this lesson despite that. I'm just, I'll just draw a very simple character. So we're going to go with this line, and I'm going to make sure that I close my line as I indicated in my previous lesson so that we can color in properly. So we're going to do a basic body. So I'll just put that as his arm. And now we've got our body over here. And I'm just going to go all the way down to there. And we filled it in with a paint bucket tool, if you remember in the last lesson. So I've just closed all the lines on the paint bucket tool. And now I'm just going to use this, the circle shape, to create those eyes. And we'll do the circle full shape over there to create the black part and I'm going to need to draw a nose so there's the nose and we'll draw a very simple mouth and we've got a basic character developing over here there's his hair just trying to draw it very simply just so you all understand the principles of what's involved and we're gonna make these eyes move back and forth and I'm just closing all the spaces I don't really want to have any problems when I color in when we go to duplicate, we're going to just drag, as I've just shown you there, if I press on that, I dragged it, and now I'm going to erase certain parts. So I'm going to erase the black part over there, just erase the two black parts, and I'm going to also work on the mouth so you can see I've taken out the parts that I want to move to create some sort of movement. We'll take this arm as well, so there's going to be movement in the arm as our character is animated but we want a lot of it to remain static it's quite important that when animating that you have some of the things remain in the same place and there's just some parts moving so you're going to see i need to see through this frame so if i click on the onion skin there we go the onion skin now you can see through the frame it's given a transparency you can see through it and you can see that light gray is indicating that that's where the previous frames eyes the black parts were so those where the pupils would be so i'm going to now move them into a different position and we need to do that and i'm going to use this full circle full tool and to do that so let's get round to doing that and we're going to change the position of these black spots so i'm going to move that one to the right hand side and then we'll have this one also on the right hand side so it'll give the impression of his eyes turning to the left hand side we as the observer would be seeing here it's on our right hand side and we change the mouth so if i turn the onion skin look you can see the animation taking shape quite nicely so now we're going to drag and we've duplicated this one and we're going to then do the very same thing and i'm going to just bring in a little mosquito or bee that's flying in on my character just to give it some sort of humor and try and make it interesting and we've got this insect coming in and his eyes are observing it so if i click on this frame and i erase the black parts so let's just erase that again because we want to just show these eyes are moving as he is facing the the incoming insect i'm just going to take all of that out and we'll make his eyes change quite substantially and if we bring in the onion skin it gives the transparency back to us and his mouth's now opening up as he sees this insect zooming in on him and we'll make the eyes a bit bigger because he's getting a bit scared and usually that's the case 
and the full, the little black dots, move up over there, and we'll bring in this insect as well. Over there, you can see it's taking, you can see if I go over here, and it seems to be working out quite well. So now let's drag that, and we're going to do the very same thing once again. So we're going to erase it, we're going to erase out the mouth, because our focus is going to be the movement of the eyes, mouth. The insect now needs to also be coming in, so there you can see through the frame, and we're going to bring the insect to about there. I think that will be perfect. Oh, that's a bit pretty much on the same place. But anyway, I'm just going to do that. And we could move it if I drag it with a selection tool. We'll just change its direction and move it to about, it's, it's almost, yeah, let's put it on his, well, we'll make it moving down there. So we've got that it moves down. And we'll now go to the mouth and we'll, and we'll, okay, I'm just going to erase this insect. Just getting a bit confused here. And we'll draw the insect again, like that. I'm just doesn't really matter. I'm working really back to front. I'm going to move it. Let's move it there. So it's landing on his ear. And we'll give it a slight turn. And it's on his ear. And now we'll bring in a few lines to show its movement. This fly, bee, or whatever it is, is moving in. And we're going to transform his mouth again and bring in a few facial lines and let's erase those eyes and as you can see you can still see through the frame it's transparent the light gray showing the transparent areas the previous frames and we're going to then work on those eyes make them even larger than they were in the previous frame with the circle and we'll make those pupils like that and we have a, a basic animation coming in over there so if we turn off the onion skin take off the transparency and now we'll bring in a bit of color so we got this color which is pretty much like the color of skin and we're just coloring in you can see that there's open spaces so that's needing to be fixed can't have everything the color of that so we're going to go black we're, going, we're back on the pencil tool. We close all the lines and now we can bring in a different color. Let's go with red and we'll make the jersey or his shirt red. So we've got a red shirt. Hmm, there's no hand there, but it doesn't matter. And we go to the next frame. We can color that in with a paint bucket tool. We're using that paint bucket tool and you can see it's working quite nicely. And now we go to the background. Go with a purple, purple mesh. And we bring in a purple background. Paint bucket tool works beautifully. And we'll just bring in this part over here as well. But as you can see, you've got a good idea of how it works. And if you look over there, you can see that's our animation. It works quite well when you've got some parts that are staying in the same place. They're static and other parts that are moving. You don't want to have everything moving all the time. For the sake of this lesson, I'm not going to color everything in, but I just wanted you to get the idea of how it works. If I stop and I can add in another slide, another frame, and I could again just drag, and that's going to copy the previous frame. So you drag and move it to the previous frame. You can drag any one of the other frames as well. So you've got quite a lot of interesting aspects. I think that's everything I wanted to show you. I'd just like to thank everyone for their support and subscriptions. Hi guys, this is Somila. This lesson was done by Mr. Bradley in grade 60. I would just like everyone I would just like to thank everyone for supporting us and please subscribe to Mr. Bradley's videos on YouTube. Thank you.